Hi guys, so it's been a while since I've made a video, so I've decided to do this update because there were quite a few uh, new developments happening in my tanks. So this is my display tank for 160 liter uh, system uh, and you have probably noticed that it doesn't have uh, Altum Angels in it. So this will be probably the first story that I will start with. So the biggest news in this tank is that I had to rehome uh, my Altum Angels, all uh, seven of them. Uh, there were basically two reasons why I decided to do that. And that was certainly a, a difficult decision to make because uh, some of them have stayed uh, in my different tanks for more than two years and uh, they've been breeding so I was quite attached to this group of items but nevertheless uh, there were two reasons why I had to do that so the main reason being our water changes uh, previously I had to do two uh, sometimes three well most of the time three massive water changes on this tank removing about 70% uh, or sometimes even 80% of water to keep the nitrates down because this tank had a group of uh, Altum Angels it also has a group of uh, wild discus wild green discus and uh, no other fish uh, but nevertheless because both of these uh, species are quite uh, messy eaters uh, I had to do a lot of water changes in order to keep the nitrates down because if I, if I wouldn't do three water changes the nitrates will go up to about 20 which is not very good for this fish and previously I was working from home so I had time to do these three water changes and it's quite easy to do these water changes on this tank because it's in our kitchen and uh, uh, kitchen sink is uh, right behind it so I would just attach a, a pipe in here and I will fill it up uh, quite fast but uh, now I have to work mostly from office which means that I only have time to do one uh, water change on this tank uh, uh, usually on the weekend and I don't really have time to to do water changes uh, throughout the week and uh, that certainly wasn't good for um, all of this fish so most reasonable thing to do was either to uh, rehome altums or to rehome discus which also a, a bit of a gamble because both of this uh, I'm quite attached to both of this fish but in terms of wild discus wild green discus it has taken me more than two years to find them at a reasonable price and to find a sufficiently large group so they're really hard to find uh, in the UK uh, well it's a bit easier if you're willing to pay a lot of money but if you want to uh, find a group of wild green discus at a reasonable price at a reasonable quality uh, it's a bit harder it's easier to find altum angels I know at least four places where I can buy altum angels if I want uh, to keep them again so uh, it was kind of more reasonable to rehome items rather than discos. So yeah, they, they went to someone who has a really huge tank with lots of different uh, wild angels in there and uh, they're really happy in there. I rehomed them about a week ago and they fully settled in that uh, person's tank and uh, they're feeding and enjoying their life so I'm quite happy about them. So the second reason why I decided to rehome my group of items is because uh, breeding uh, season is approaching and uh, normally other angels they start uh, displaying breeding behavior from uh, around uh, mid-November to about uh, April or sometimes uh, May that's when they breed in the wild and uh, they surprisingly have the same breeding uh, clock uh, in uh, in aquarium so uh, usually around november they start pairing up they start uh, dividing splitting territories and there's lots of fights because of that so i had one breeding pair and uh, three other adults so uh, they've already started pairing up uh, before i rehomed them and there were quite a bit of fighting taking place and quite a lot of um, territorial uh, disputes uh, so the discos were suffering as a result and uh, uh, i just felt that uh, i have no space for all this breeding activity in here and i'm not really interested in breeding them because that's a lot of work and it's not particularly 
actually a rewarding process because uh, you invest a lot of time and a lot of money into uh, breeding items and uh, you gain very little afterwards because uh, that's a specialist fish very few people know what what this fish is most people will just think that these are regular uh, striped angel fish and they don't understand why these fish are so expensive so it would be really hard for me to sell ju juveniles or even to rehome them which i know from previous experience of breeding for example monocapur angels uh, that's why I'm, i wasn't interested in breeding these items and uh, just keeping these uh, breeding pairs that are constantly aggressive and active in in this display tank didn't make any sense uh, so yeah this tank is uh, no longer quite heavily stocked as it used to be before so now it's uh, i would say very lightly stocked and we can uh, have a look at um, what's happening in this tank at the moment so we have a group of uh, wild green discus in here they they're scared now because we're filming and uh, they're kind of all hiding in one part of the tank but they will come out they've been growing quite fast actually they, they're feeding well and they're very active but uh, they don't really like camera they're a bit camera shy so they're hiding at the moment i've also added some uh, fresh driftwood this is a red moor uh, driftwood which still looks Mm, kind of fresh at the moment but uh, it will get uh, darker over time I added some um, Brazilian moss uh, to the driftwood hoping that it will um, start growing and over here I've got a relatively large plant of uh, hydrocotyle leucephala which is kind of, kind of a South American epiphyte uh, plant and uh, I've added it relatively recently so it's still hasn't uh, kind of established itself so the this potos plants on the top of the tank that grow with their roots in the tank uh, they've been doing really great actually and uh, they've been spreading around and uh, they've been growing really fast i guess because there were also quite quite a few of uh, nitrate spikes here and uh, they generally thrive on nitrates so they enjoyed it uh, despite having all these potos it's still really hard to control nitrates it was hard to control nitrates when i had too many fish in here but now nitrates are, are down at about five which is absolutely fine for this fish and uh, yeah i think other than that this tank is more peaceful and more harmonious now because the discos are just staying all together as a school and uh, they're kind of uh, schooling together and uh, uh, they are not uh, mature yet they're not sexually mature yet so they don't fight and they kind of uh, get along uh, really well among each other although there are some smaller individuals like for example this guy here and there's another one that are smaller but still they get along with the larger fish quite uh, harmoniously so this had to be done because he was going nuts for all the cables and all the microphone equipment in here so um, I think that's it about this tank and we're going to move uh, to our other tanks so let's talk about this tank next uh, this is our rio negro uh, black water biotope tank which was set up uh, probably a month and a half ago possibly two months ago and it's actually doing quite great it, it became quite mature so leaf litter bed uh, on the bottom it, it kind of went through a few stages of decay because these leaves are decaying eventually so I have to replenish uh, this leaf litter uh, so there's a layer of decaying leaves and there's a kind of uh, fresher leaves on the top which I add from time to time there are some tweaks from oak trees uh, uh, in terms of population we have here 10 cardinal tetras and they've actually have grown up quite a lot so they really enjoy this black water condition this tank looks particularly great in the morning when the lights are off and it's kind of pitch black in here you can't see anything except this uh, shining uh, neon uh, lights of cardinal tetras i've tried filming it it doesn't look good at all because you can't really see anything it's just completely black with this shining lights in there but anyways if you have a chance to put together a black water biotope for cardinal tetras or neon tetras certainly do that because they look absolutely amazing in black water uh, the camera certainly doesn't do them justice apart from cardinal tetras we have here uh, four dwarf pencil fish and I've actually lost one of these 
pencil fish because it previously I didn't have this dense carpet of Amazon frog bit on top and they're quite jumpy so one of them jumped out at night but now um, uh, they can't jump anymore because of this uh, layer of Amazon frog bits and lastly uh, about uh, a week and a half ago I added here a pair of uh, pistos. Uh, these are uh, Pistagramma rio mamore, which is, uh, w they're actually wild caught and they're quite rare. They're not the most colorful uh, pistos available on the market, but they're certainly very unusual and uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, they kind of already started uh, breeding, uh, but I didn't see any fry so far, so maybe uh, uh, the fry was eaten by, by, by other fish. Uh, what else? Um, we have here uh, two uh, species of potos on top, golden potos uh, and regular potos, and we have monsteras, two, two different monsteras, and they're actually growing quite, uh, quite nicely and really fast because they get a lot of light. Uh, Amazon frog beets are just doing amazingly on top of this tank. Uh, they've spread up so much and they covered the whole surface. And uh, in there we have a large uh, chunk of driftwood. And actually my idea was for this chunk of driftwood to get covered with monstera and potos roots. And this is what's happening right now. So I'm quite happy with uh, this situation. Previously I used to have here two uh, echinodorus plants, Amazon sword plants. And I, that was kind of an experience because I wanted to see if they will be able to grow in black water but that was a failure they were not dying but they were not growing either so they were just there and uh, I removed them eventually because you can see there's hardly any light that penetrates because of Amazon frog beat uh, on top and also because of the black water condition so uh, there are very few chances to grow any plants in substrate or under the water just some surface floating plants but uh, nothing else and i'm quite happy with um, surface plants because uh, now this tank looks more natural and it looks like a piece of uh, uh, real uh, wild habitat so let's move on uh, to the next tank this is a uh, uh, Pantanal wetlands biotope it's a clear water system which i set up about uh, a month ago i think Ever since it has changed a bit, mostly in terms of population, in terms of scape and in terms of plants. Uh, this is a picture how this tank has looked before. So previously it used to have this massive piece of driftwood in here and one of the monstera plants was growing on top of it. I removed that driftwood because it kind of blocked this whole part of this tank and uh, I just didn't like the way it looked. So now, once uh, that driftwood was gone, I've added some uh, Echinodorus plants in here, actually three species of Echinodorus. That's Echinodorus argentinensis. Behind there is Echinodorus uh, polyfolius, and in the back uh, uh, there is Echinodorus blairi. Uh, I've planted them here recently, and uh, they are growing in plastic pots filled with coconut fiber. Uh, you can't see the pots because they're covered with uh, pea gravel and some sand. I've also added some root sticks into the uh, pots, so I'm hoping that they will start growing. But again, I've received these plants in a really miserable condition. They were almost dying, they didn't really have any root system. So they're kind of recovering now. I can see some fresh leaves popping up, but it will take them probably another month to just establish themselves. Uh, the other a new plant in here are, are this uh, Helantium bolivianum. Uh, they also arrived in a relatively poor condition. They're kind of go they, they're getting back to life now, but uh, they're still not particularly healthy at the moment. But I've added root sticks in here as well, so hopefully they will colonize this front part of the fish tank. Uh, that part is completely overtaken by Myriophyllum matogrossense and I really like this plant. It kind of looks like Kabomba, but it's hardy as a Kabomba because it can live in cooler water. And um, just for your reference, if you haven't seen the previous video about this tank, this is an unheated system, so there is no heater and the temperature is currently at about 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, there is also no filter. The only piece of equipment that I have on this tank is this uh, wave maker pump it's a 2000 liters per hour wave maker pump and there's no other equipment in here i'm not dosing co2 and i'm not fertilizing this tank uh, all right so but, but nevertheless you can see that plants are 
growing really lush and uh, they, they're very uh, they're feeling great uh, so yeah we, we've got lots of uh, myriophyllum in here and that's a really beautiful plant here and over there i've got uh, more of hydrocotyl leucephala this one doesn't grow well but the other one is kind of exploding I've got another echinodorus over there, but uh, it's uh, not possible to see it. Lots of Brazilian moss on driftwood uh, growing really well. And of course, lots of uh, potos plants are growing with their roots in the tank. Uh, in terms of population, I previously had here a group of serpa tetras. They have grown up quite a bit and they col color it up so they're quite red right now. Also I had a group of black neon tetras and they're still here. I've added a group of uh, black uh, skirt tetras. They're also called a black widow tetras which I don't really like. That, that sounds a bit strange. So uh, yes uh, and uh, they're also from the same habitat they're from. They're from Pantanal wetlands in southern Brazil, so they, they fit with this current uh, stocking uh, quite well. Uh, I've added uh, bronze quarries, Corridorus um, aeneus, and um, peppered quarries, uh, Corridorus paleatus. They're still quite small, so they're hiding most of the time, but they're feeding well and they're active. Uh, I had, well, I bought uh, five um, Epistagramma borally in here, but uh, all of them except one male disappeared mysteriously, which was about like two or three weeks ago. I realized that I only have one of them and the rest, I just couldn't find them. There's no dead bodies that I can see and they didn't jump out. They just, uh, well, mysteriously disappeared. So I only have one Epistagramma borally here. Uh, yeah, other than that, this tank is uh, very low maintenance. I just do uh, one, uh, about 40% uh, water change per week and the water is cle clean. Uh, all the water parameters are great. Uh, there's almost no nitrates in here. Last time I measured it was close to zero because of, of all the plants. And So uh, this was a bit of an experiment because I didn't know whether the system will function without filtration without CO2, without heating, uh, but it, it certainly does. The plants are feeling great and the fish are feeling great. They're growing fast and they're really healthy. Actually, most of these fish, they prefer cooler water and they feel more comfortable at lower temperatures rather than at those temperatures at which they are normally kept, which is like mid uh, 20s Celsius, uh, which are a bit too high for them. Uh, right, so I think this is all about this tank. And one more thing to mention about this Rio Negro biotop tank is that it also has no filtration. It has one heater to keep the temperature higher, so it's at about 26, 27 degrees Celsius because this is what this fish usually like. Uh, it has um, an air stone, but no filtration in here as well. And there is no need for filtration in here because all of this decaying leaf uh, litter it will clog any kind of filter including sponge filter so it makes no, no sense. And I also don't really need any biological filtration in here because uh, the pH and acidity and hardness are really low so the pH last time I measured was um, at about five and uh, conductivity was also really low so biological filtration is unlikely to work in these conditions so i hope you like this update uh, yeah the sad part is that i had to let my altum angels go but they're in a better place now at least they're in a larger tank and uh, uh, hopefully they're happier now and I'm happy as well because I don't have to do that many water changes. Of course, I do miss them quite a lot, but I know that someday when I will have more space and I will have more time to invest into the hobby, I will get Altum Angels again and I will raise them up to this larger size again and possibly breed them again. But for now, I don't really have these ambitions and I'm quite happy with what I have now. Uh, I will be making more informative videos in near future, not just talking about myself and uh, what's happening in my tanks, but also hopefully sharing some useful tips and information which can also be useful for you. So uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't and uh, leave your comments in the comment section and I will see you very soon.